Hallelujah. We're blessed to be in the Lord's house tonight. Amen. There's not a better place to be than in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place. We honor you that this praise would be like sweet sounds to your ears, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. can trump me but God can trump us hallelujah and God will always you know in our lives we always you know that's the way it is if God says something other than what I say then then the Lord trumps me God rules hallelujah Hallelujah. and the you know 
I know where I would be if it had not been for the Lord's Amen. mercy. Amen. Amen. I know where I would be if it had not been for the Lord's mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. That is new every morning. Amen. 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 The Lord's mercy is new every morning. Before we even get up, the Lord's mercy is already new. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We honor you in this house, Lord. Thank you, Lord. shepherd he goes before me defender behind me I won't fear I'm filled with anointing my cups overflow
Lord, we thank you. We honor you in this house, Lord, today and every day. Thank you, Lord, that you comfort us. Thank you, Lord, that you are our strong tower. Thank you, Lord, that you help us, you guide us, you cover us, you heal us, you deliver us, you save us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this time and this the word that will go out and not return void thank you lord for your servant thank you lord for the the children in the gathering center thank you for the teachers the helpers thank you lord for every leader and laborer in this church and ministry thank you lord hallelujah for the associate pastors and their families hallelujah for the worship pastor and youth pastor and their families, hallelujah. For the apostle of the house and for his family, hallelujah. For the missionary in the house and for his family, hallelujah. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for our online family. Thank you, Lord, for what you are doing, the things that we see and the things that we don't see yet, hallelujah. Thank you for the goodness of the Lord all around us. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray, Lord, for those who are hurting, those who are suffering worldwide, Lord. Lord, please help them to draw close to you so that you can draw close to them. We pray for those with broken hearts, that you would cover them with your peace, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, again and again and again for the precious blood that you shed on Calvary for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, because of you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place, Abba. Thank you, Lord. Have your way in this place, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do in this house tonight. In Jesus' name, all of God's children say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Thank right. you, Pastor Holulu, for that graphics. Hallelujah. Rivers of living water. Amen. That's a lot of water. Chambre <laughs> Shele Hallelujah. Hallelujah. An update for January's missions offering to Myanmar, $1,200. We thank you all and a couple other m people in Brownsville, Texas, and Victoria, Mexico, and ourselves contributing. It's like, yeah, it's like 41,000 Thai baht. <laughs> Praise God. Our title, Rivers of Living Water, as we have experienced the outpouring in these past couple of days, it's like, wow, can you imagine the ev evaporation over the Pacific, going into the clouds and just pouring and pouring and through the night pouring? It's like, that's a lot of water, but God has a plan, you know? His glory, His spirit, how much more? We cannot see it, but pours and fills all over the world. Some, sometimes people have landslides, calamities, flooding, but how much more? <laughs> There's fullness for His people. Refreshing, good, healthy water to drink. When places, you know, barely have water and, and dry ground and everything like that, you know. We thank you for your generous offerings, giving. Lord, multiply into your lives as you have given. The Lord repays back unto you. Hallelujah. Thousandfold. It's coming. It's here. Hallelujah. We'll turn to the scriptures, John 7, 38. 
And we'll read together. It says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. John 7, 38. Thank you for honoring the word. You may be seated. New King James Version. The King James Version says, Out of your belly, deep in here, in your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Deep within your heart, who shall lead, guide, minister to you for 2024? You know, you seeking the Lord, want to hear everything, but he went to heaven and said, I sent you the comforter. He's, he'll comfort you, strengthen you, be your intercessor, all that you need, empower you right there. He's dropped in each and every one of you who have been filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Wells of water springing up to everlasting life. You know, you receive salvation like that well. Water's always there. But the rivers agitating, moving, always flowing, you know, the life of the Holy Ghost in you. Praise God. It says, he who believes in me, as the scripture has says, out of his belly or out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Verse 39, but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Jesus there in the Gospels, ministering, walking with his disciples, and telling them, the time's coming. We're going to release the third person of the Trinity, the Godhead, the uniplural word. Jesus was with him from the beginning and before the Holy Ghost. He's chomping at the bits, waiting at the gates, wanting to come down. But Jesus said, wait, 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 wait. I got to do my thing here. I got to do what I see my father do, you know, before I release the, the workhorse on the earth, the Holy Spirit. And more and more, we're getting more intimate with the Spirit of God. Here on earth for the times of calamities and challenges we're living in, but he'll make it so personal to us. And so we just, you know, build a little bit more on the foundation, share a little bit in the Old Testament, some scriptures, because in the Old Testament, the Spirit came upon the prophets, kings, and priests, and not the everyday people like we, we are, but In Jeremiah 2.13, Jeremiah 2.13. But in verse 11, it says, Has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods, but my people have changed their glory. The Hebrew children living in the land, in Jerusalem, taking upon themselves different gods and idols and departing from their living God. And it says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. You know, cisterns can hold water, hewn out of the rock, holding water, but there's, there's a crack and there's leak, then it's useless. And then Jesus also quoted and remembered the words of Jeremiah, and he said, They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. But notice in verse 11, the second part, it says, but my people have changed their glory. Whoa. 
So the Hebrew children came from Egyptian bondage to the Red Sea and saw God's power, came into the land, living, eating better, growing their crops, chased out all the other Hittites and Amalekites and all of the armies, and they won and started to depart from God, but they had an anointing upon them. It's the anointing and the word that they, the other peoples was afraid of. And he says, but my people have changed their glory. The glory of God was upon them. And yet they wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost yet. They were doing the temple rituals, the laws, the covenant things. But then we'll see the Holy Ghost is in you. Almighty God has come to dwell in us. But they had the presence of God, but in their sin and departure, they changed their glory. They had the glory upon them. They changed their glory. Psalm 92.10 says, But my horn, meaning strength. But my strength you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. God will strengthen you, equip you, empower you with fresh oil, fresh anointing. Isaiah ten twenty seven. The Assyrians were persecuting the nation of Israel. And verse 27 says, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. King James Version says, The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There's an anointing. The yoke that the cattle used to pull, the plow with around their neck. But how much more? You are are yoked together with Jesus. He's doing the pulling. You're just flowing close to him. And he gives an anointing. There's anointing upon us that's powerful. And many times we cannot see, but it destroys anxious thoughts. Lies and deceptions of the enemy, discouragement, and what do I do now? What do I do now? Doubt. And then fear tries to creep in. But Jesus always says, fear not. Fear not, my children. Fear not, you know. Don't let that get into your thinking. Because when that deceitful words and discouragement get in, then it begins to come out of your mouth. When it comes out of your mouth, then it binds up the angels from moving because of that negative, declarative words is against the word. So they cannot cannot move. They're bound up until you get into the joy and the victory and anointing and then begin releasing. I can do all things. Hey, I can make it through today. No matter what the weather and conditions and coldness and and financial things, I can make it. And then you begin to speak, and then the angels begin working on your behalf, moving on your place, touching people's hearts, opening doors, and giving you creative ideas for your businesses and thoughts, and reminding you, you're not going to stay here. You're not going to be here forever. I created you as the elect few. Been coming out, braving the storms and the rains and the hardships, but I got a plan for you. You're going to be in a control. You're going to be ruling and reigning because when I pour out my rains from heaven, whew, these rivers would propel you forth. 
And he's preparing you, giving you these ideas and thoughts and how you can manage this, how you can create this, how you can buy this additional property to help other people and build things like that. (coughs) It's like, wow, it's much, much, much bigger. But currently, you know, you might be thinking, oh, yeah, this week, you know, next, last week, 2023 was suffering to this and things like that. But God sees lands, nations, peoples. It's like, wow, that's freedom, you know, in the Holy Ghost. Then we come back to the New Testament. And we see in John chapter 14, Jesus is still giving instructions. John 14, verse 16 to 17. It says, Jesus says this in red letters that I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Verse 26. But the helper... The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So Jesus was right with them, their comforter, teaching, ministering, speaking. They knew his voice, but it's advantageous that he goes, then he's going to send the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He will minister the things that the Father and, and... Jesus interceding will come through the Holy Ghost in us. And the Greek word for the comforter is paraclete. And it's a sevenfold word. It's comforter, helper, counselor, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, and standby. He's a counselor to you in school. You're Guidance counselor, advocate, like a lawyer, intercessor, praying on your behalf, strengthen you, and stand by. Stand by. You know, there's a Lexus GX 550 coming out, and I was looking at the GX 460. 460 has a V8 engine, you know, but then over 10 years, just producing, producing, coming out. But V6 has um, power, 550 horsepower, and twin turbo, so more turbo (laughs) mix coming into the engine. And so it's like, wow, you'd be driving up country and Kula, and then you go into the higher elevations, less air, 10,000, 25 feet to Haleakala, and then all of a sudden you see another gear. That's a turbo power kicking in. That's the, uh, the standby, the standby power, you know, for whatever you need. The Holy Ghost is always there, ready to back you up and empower you. The, the church and its power, Acts 1.8. So now Jesus has gone on to heaven. And then he's he going to say, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What is the ends of the earth? Maui. All the way around, you know, trying to get to Jerusalem, Israel. And then here we're on Maui on this side of the Pacific, you know. It's like, wow, God making a complete circle to the ends of the earth. 
He's em empowering us to witness. Two, chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, the coming of the Holy Spirit. It says, Now when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they appeared to them, divided tongues as fire and one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Whoo! People around them thought they was drunk, yeah. but this was not that. This was the Holy Ghost. And uh, praise God. Amen. Same like back then, yes. 2,024 years plus, that outpouring, you got it. You got that same tongues of fire, <laughs> empowering, keeping you warm, energized, and encouraged, whether in school or work or all places. And the reminder, the reminder is the Holy Ghost, coming out of you. Every time you're praying in the Holy Ghost, reminding you to look to the inside, depend on the Spirit of God inside. He'll bubble up the Word to your mind to act on situations like that, you know. And more and more you listen down here, you act from down here, you make decisions from down in your spirit to the point where in your daily walk, you're like, hey, making decisions based on the spirit within coming forth. And it's like, hey, I wasn't praying so much in tongues at that moment or that time and everything, but quickly acting, checking down here in every situation of life. It's the spirit of God ministering the word coming to you regularly more and more and more and more the thoughts the ideas the plans the purposes the dreams visions and revelation coming when you're resting you're sleeping who the same spirit working continually 24 7 hallelujah trying to encourage you put you over in life give you the joy and victory hallelujah the, the joy in the New Testament Greek, the word for joy is chara, C-H-A-R-A, meaning joy, delight, pleasure, extreme gladness. Joy is associated with life. Hallelujah. Life. Chara. The joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. You got the joy, joy, joy deep in your heart, inside your spirit. You're stirring up that spirit. Hallelujah. You know, the happiness can, you know, face situations and problems and everything and be a little bit discouraged and unhappy, but the joy is always steady, the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace. Hallelujah. The joy. Smith Wigglesworth, an English preacher, he said, uh, if the Holy Ghost don't move me, I move the Holy Ghost. Okay. And he raised like over 11 people recorded from the dead yeah, and yeah. up to 21 or something. It's like, wow. wow. He, he said, I always keep a New Testament in my, in my back pocket. Because if I go out of the house, I feel naked without it. I, and they said he would go and eat. And then after the meal, he would tell the people, oh, we have fed the flesh. Now it's time to feed the spirit. He'd pull out his New Testament, read a verse or two, you know, encourage people like that. You know, it's like, wow, yeah, praise God, you know. Acts 10, verse 1 and 2, and 44 to 48, Acts 10, about Cornelius. It says, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always, Cornelius. 
Verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Sickness and disease is from Satan and the foul works of sin and comes sickness and disease, but how much more? Healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God is with you. Amen. Empowering you. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving you the victory. Verse 44 to 44 to 45. It says, While Peter was still speaking these these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had not been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, Can anyone forbid water that these should be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they asked him to stay a few days. Amen. Oh, Amen. hallelujah. Amen. So from, you know, the Greek soldier of the Italian regiment who was controlling and ruling the land, Cornelius, praying, observing, watching the Hebrew people, having his household obey the uh, the truths of God. Peter coming to his household, ministering to all of his family, unbelievers. They believe in Jesus. And then Peter seeing in reality, wow, now this is the plan of God. The Holy Spirit falling on all these people, on their household, speaking in other tongues. Wow. From then on, you know, the Spirit slowly slowly going through europe they had some dark ages without the written word and people struggling and living and hardships and disease and famine but how much more whoa missionaries coming to the islands bring forth the word somehow the word's preciousness coming to each and somehow each and every one of our families it's like, whoa, you meditate and you think about how God has brought you to such an honorable place, you know, Hallelujah. under the spout where the glory comes out. Yeah. Ooh, right here. How much more? That's why we're so thankful. You know, you notice more and more, you know, all the preachers, everybody has the honor to share from, you know, this pulpit. The pastors give us the honor like that to share. And it goes over the airways, different parts of the world we don't realize, you know, as they're tapping on YouTube and everything, finding out, hey, where's this place in Maui, you know? And then by tomorrow, you know, I also go on my, on the YouTube, what a truth, Pshum, send it uh, via WhatsApp. And then, you know, convert it and send them. And my friend, Pastor Fred Morris over the border in Tachilek, Myanmar, <laughs> he'll read it, check, see the whole service and everything like that and make a comment. Oh, thank you. Good word. Good word. Praise the Lord. You know, <laughs> everything, you know. It's like uh, they, you know, they don't realize or can see the inner workings of your lives and your giving and everything. But then when it converted and everything and his 25 kids and his seven outreach pastors in the mountains, they get their monthly offerings and rice and oil like that. They're like thankful. And then he sees me, you know, almost weekly, several times, all you know, the pictures of the Hill Tribe festivals and what took place over Christmas and New Year and everything like that and you know I, I can realize wow give him the freedom you know that he can 
go there, you know, pay fuel for the motorcycles and bring rice and gifts and sign in and different things for all the kids in the different villages. And they get some refugee peoples from the inland of Myanmar because they have a kind of like a civil war and a junta government ruling over the people. So some Lahu, he'll try people, you know, maybe 30 families or something, make their way to the mountains and then come over this eastern Myanmar side, living in another village. And then through the help and finances of the church, they get to, hey, buy some, you know, different... um, Things for the people, clothing, food, and to bamboo and everything. They, they set up their houses and everything like that. You know, it's like, wow, amazing. Wow. It just gives that pastor a little freedom and uh, prestige, you know. Because in the country, they're kind of like hindered and, you know, barely making a little bit of um, chat. Chat money is the Burmese money, you know. But they, they use the Thai bot, which has more power and influence in their country. But it's like, wow, just, you know, people recognize and other people in his Tachilik town come over his house, widows and orphans, things like that, asking for some food and rice and he can give them like that. Has, just have the freedom, you know. It's like, wow, praise the Lord. Praise, praise God, you know. Romans 8.2. Romans 8.2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus I remember reading about this American missionary, John G. Lake, took his family to South Africa. And they had a bubonic plague (coughs) that affected the the lungs and many, many, many thousands of people dying. And the disease and the foam coming out of the people's mouth and that foam... For several days, if, if you get in contact with the foam, you can still die. But he was taking care of many of his parishioners and other people, and uh, he wasn't getting sick or anything. And then an English medical ship came from England, and then they talked with him and says, Hey, what you been taking to prevent you from dying of all this sickness? He said, uh, Well, there's a scripture. It says, for the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. And he said, let me show you an experiment. You scrape the foam from a dead body. You get your microscope and you put it on my hand. And then watch, watch the foam when it goes on my hand. And then they were watching and he said, they said, wow, it's so amazing. As soon as the foam got on your hand, all the germs died and withered, you know. He said, gentlemen, that's the law, spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Woo-hoo. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the Lord has empowered you with all of that, you know. And so even the threat of a second type disease or virus and everything, it's like you got to find your word to stand on. You find your word to stand against every situation, lie, deception like that, you know. Here's another one in 8, 11. Verse 11 says, But if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This scripture, I mentioned the English preacher. He was a plumber. And his wife, Polly, was the preacher. And one, you know, he was getting hard, hard of hard, working, working every day and, you know, helping in the church. And then after that, you know, keep working in his plumbing business. And then one day, 
when he came home, he, his wife came home a little bit late at night after service, and he locked the door and wouldn't uh, let her in because, you know, he was getting callous and everything. So she just kind of like laid there on the door, back porch, and slept through the night. And then next morning, he went up to the kitchen and opened the door, and she like f- fell onto the kitchen floor, bound it up, got up, greeted Smith Wigglesworth, hey, made his breakfast, didn't complain, everything like that, and it convicted him. He said from that moment, he changed, you know. And then he finally got filled with the Holy Ghost, and he was a you know real gruff man and everything coming to the uh, preacher to receive uh, the Holy Spirit. And he said, oh, yeah, you came to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yeah. He said, yeah, give me that Holy Ghost stuff. Yeah, just give me that stuff, you know. I want that, <laughs> everything like that, you know. Okay. And the preacher, okay, cool down, re- relax, relax. You know, you need the Holy Spirit, the baptism. He said, just give me the tongues and the Holy Spirit stuff. I need that, you know. And God touched him and shaked him and empowered him. But, oh, from that time in England, as he traveled you know, across the, to Australia by boat and to America and touch people's lives and everything. And in the Assembly God, churches and movement, you know, they heard some of his meetings and everything like that. And some, some lady who, uh, they had a respiratory disease and an asthma and almost on the deathbed, but they called Assembly of God, asked for his address, sent the letter to England and a handkerchief. He prayed over that and sent it back and says, as soon as you get this handkerchief, you know, put it on your, um, your loved one. But they were so busy in the house that they just put them on the you know, side table by her bed. And they went out and did some more business. And then all of a sudden, they heard from the room, ah, 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 a shouting. It's like, what's going on? She raised from the dead or what? And then she said, yeah, I was laying down. All of a sudden, one power was coming from that handkerchief into my body from the top to the bottom and shaking and, and bringing the healing and power in and stuff like that. So the anointing is transferable. Just like the hem of Jesus' garment. Shoom, the anointing. And how much more that same anointing is in you. Is in you. Who is in you? Hallelujah. Man, praise the Lord. God's love for us. Encouraging us, you know, this 2024 that he'll teach, encourage, give us wisdom, guidance. Verse 14. 8.14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Amen. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Woo-wee. Joint heirs. Joint heirs of all that he would want us to have, you know. Amen. Not suffering or lacking. He didn't have a house here on earth. He said, the foxes have dens, but I don't have a place. But how much more? Woo. He has and cares for you for his very best. His very best. If you believe and believe and keep trusting him. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. Verse 18. But do not be drunk with wine where is 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 dissipation or excess but be filled with the spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms hymns and spiritual songs making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ hallelujah Hallelujah. 
Wow, many of you in times past may have remembered how you was like so f full with, with alcohol and drink and everything like that and never had a care and just was uttering all about the bus, speaking things out and just dancing with joy and everything like that, you know. And I was thinking just the last service we'd had, we had at the end of the service, you know, Pastor Bobby, you know, was uh, before the prayer for the offering and we came down and give give an offering and i mentioned to pastor randy i said uh hey it's different when the song wasn't playing it's so quiet and it kind of stiff coming down you know because the song played a little bit late and then i sat down and then the spirit nudged me why don't you step out and go up there every thought and you know <laughs> thought in my head no I don't want to go there I've been here you know 20 something years and I never had the end of a service go up and, and go praise the Lord and do something like that you know it's like get up go go down there so I finally <laughs> luckily Kapua, Lani came up and she, she had the banner so she was you know kind of encouraging and it's like okay praise the Lord and everything like that you know but just, and then going back, it's like, hey, uh, the step of faith, yeah. the Holy Ghost. Sometimes the simplest things, you got to yeah. uh, take the little bit step of faith in your life to <laughs> say something to your co-worker, uncomfortable, or pray for something. It's like, oh, no, come on, Lord, no, no, let me pass on this one like that. But that's him will lead to something and something else and different things like that. It's like, wow, just trusting in him in the very little details of your life. Yes. He will you, lead, a little bit more lead you and more strong and, and more, you know, maybe critical things, critical things in your life that you needed and needed to depend. And you can like, okay, that's your voice, Lord. That's you. I'm going to trust you there. And that's him, you know. It's like, yeah, well done, my son and daughter. That's it. That's the way we're going to move in this 2024 as you step out of the box. And that's the way I'm going to pour out my fullness. Amen. And whether it's in Amen. health or medical situation or wealth transfer and obedience and different things in every area of life, it's like, wow, yeah. that's him. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. And in 1 John, it has a few scriptures. First John 2.20, you notice it says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. King James, you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. Holy Ghost is going to teach you. Give you the wisdom from inside here for your exams and your tests. Amen. Verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you will not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Amen. Ooh, the comforter. The Holy Ghost, you will abide in him. Just like Jesus was walking with the disciples, he said, it's advantageous to your advantage. I send the comforter. Yes. Now he can be in Israel. He can be in Myanmar. He can be here on Maui. Amen. All simultaneously. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who, and that spirit, we cannot you know, necessarily see everything, but as the wind moves the leaves, we're like, oh yeah, there's the movement there. Or as the rain flood Maui and all the islands, it's like, wow, there's so much rain pouring everything, filling up the rivers, and more, and more, and another night. Oh, Lord, <laughs> thank God, you know, for a roof over our head like that, you know. Whoa, more rain. Wow. Oh. Thank God, you know, yesterday, oh, I can stay home and study my word and prepare, you know, and keep warm like that, 
it's like, wow. First John 4, 4. And you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. A greater one. Greater than all the forces and evil in the world. Because you know and you see and you hear how the enemy is working over time and the deep state cabal and the globalists working and trying to rule and control. But how much more the hand of God will prove himself mighty to lift up his bride, lift up his church without spot and wrinkle. And more and more, shoom, miracles, signs, and wonders, and raising the dead, and yeah. people are getting so prosperous and giving, and the spirit of giving, you know. Sometimes on YouTube, you see some of these uh, people in African nations or different countries, they have, you know, so, many, so much money that they've made outside, and people are, you know, just selling on the streets, banana or meat or different things and some guy with money will come and take the whole platter and begin giving out all the food of, the, of half a day that the guy going to sell and whether it's uh, rice or banana then give them all free to all the people and a bunch of people will come around and then the owner who was supposed to sit there all day Finally, wonders what's going on. Then a guy comes by, pulls out the stack of new 5,000 notes and, and pays them off. And they're rejoicing and thank you, Lord, and everything like that, you know. And uh, Or in Philippines, I saw a guy buy like six bags of rice, put them by a market area, slit the bag, and give them two kilo. And he puts a sign, you know, uh, Two kilos for a peso, and everybody, one peso, one peso, oh, crowding the guy and everything like that. He has to move into a little shack where they're selling some things, barring the little um, wooden barrier area, and people just flooding, you know, oh, want to buy, want to buy, you know, and just giving them free and everything like that. It's like, wow, people have a heart, you know, a s- spirit to give. And yet, in a, currently, you know, you think this is unnatural, you know, with the s- things of recession and stuff like that. It's like, wow, seems so difficult. But how much God, in his days when he turns things around, he going to put the joy in our hearts. We're going to get so much and so much increase and so much ability to distribute. It's going, wow, we're going to be able to turn the tide of the the lack and what the enemy been doing for years upon years upon taxes and laws and restrictions and costs and rise and everything. People will be blessed with so much that they, they can use their creative artistic energy and mind to get back to their artistry and gifts and talents and painting and singing and rejoicing and helping the whole body and lift up the people of the earth, you know, before he soon returned. It's like, wow, that's the love of the Holy Spirit, you know, on this earth. And we were thankful we got our early glimpse. We got in early. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you know. It's like a... In the crypto world, there's this... Um, Crypto, crypto that's called uh, Ripple Labs, Ripple Company, because they got the name. If you drop a pebble or stone in a clear pond of water, they'll have a lot of ripple effect. You'll have ripples, 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 you know, from that. And so the initial they put RP, Ripple. But when you do things internationally and globally, for a corporation or business, you put an X in the front of that, so become, you know, uh, XRP, a global deal, you know. I call them the extra ripe papaya. <laughs> but th- this one, you know, is number seven on the charts. 
it's like uh, maybe 60 cents now you can buy them, you know, kind of being kept down. Uh, but this, this company and XRP is the rails that can bring liquidity and finances to nations. And they're already using it, you know, like when Filipino workers in Japan want to send money home to Philippines, they can use this XRP and their family downloads an app, you know, and in four to five seconds, less than a fraction of a cent, psh, they can send, you know, the thousand money dollars like that. Whereas right now sending the th thousand two hundred to Myanmar, first to Thailand, and they get it over the border, it they charged me um, $15 down at Walmart for MoneyGram. And so, yeah, we pay that like that. But a time will come when Morris can get his app and then to Zoom wallet or something, you know, can like, do, 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 do. you got it? Yeah, I got it. Praise <laughs> the Lord. You know, <laughs> go to the bank, you know. Whereas in Myanmar, the banking system is non-existent yet. So they they still archaic and everything. And uh, it's it's real challenging in using and working in their systems like that, but things will change. Yeah. There's some Amen. Asian uh, companies working to restructure their banking system like that because in Myanmar, maybe in due, due season, you know, we'll get the fruits of our labors. In the south, in the Andaman Sea, they got oil. They got oil. So if we can produce the ship, from Maui, oil, you can send them there, <laughs> fill up the ship in a time when we need gas, you know. And then they also got uh, gold up in the north and a lot of timber and everything like that. You know, that's why maybe the big corporate forces don't like them be well and right. uh, s stable, but in topsy-turvy military control and everything so they can get the resources and everything like that, you know. But God has plans and purposes and then I was just thinking, long ago, you know, when I was visiting um, Pastor Morris at his church and everything, then there was this one evangelist guy, a mission Bible student. His name was Rocky. He went to help Pastor Morris for a bit. Then he asked for a Bible. It just happened to be when I went to uh, Winter Bible Seminar in... Oklahoma, and somebody gave me a Kenneth Hagin uh, faith Bible that has sermons of his in the back and, and English Bible he wanted. So, I, you know, I had other Bibles, so I gave him that one. Then he went back to Yangon eventually, and he started a Bible school. And, you know, he's there and doing ministry, you know, and everything, I, but never saw him since that time, you know. But just a thought, hey, if ever we need oil and we're going to go to Yangon, hey, maybe I'll look up that guy, Rocky, <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> maybe he'll help us translate yeah. to, to go make arrangements for uh, a shipload of oil, you know, like that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Jude, verse 20. It says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourselves. You know, building up yourselves, charging, praying in the Holy Ghost, everything. And one time I mentioned, you know, about the Holy Spirit and this verse and everything. And you know, praying in the Holy Ghost charges your battery and strengthens you. So I was in Kalami, Congo on the Lake Tanganyika in Africa. And there was a, a senior missionary, Ralph and Shirley Hagemeyer, out of West Columbia, Texas, uh, Texas. And they had a ministry, Bible school, and, you know, lived there a number of years. But one guy helping them was uh, named Don Carroll. And he let me stay in the house the few weeks that I was with them and everything. And when I mentioned this verse 
about the Holy Spirit charging up, you know, after the message. Remember, people take heed to what you share like that. So in the yard, there was a container. Containers would be loaded up in West Columbia, Texas, and he had his uh, Toyota Land Cruiser in there, was shipped all the way there but it takes maybe another month or so before the authorities uh, let you take the vehicle out of the container and get it legalized and use it but he opened the container and then he was uh, checking the battery making sure the battery was charged everything like that you know and so I was just thinking oh interesting because when you hear charging up your spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. It's like charging up the battery. Yeah. Then he goes up and then checks his car to make sure it's uh, charged and everything like that, you know. And I remember one night guard, old gentleman there in uh, Kalami, Congo. One night, he pulled out, you know, like a penny, penny coin, and then he, he called me and he gave it to me, you know. And so I thought, okay, it's a penny, you know. <laughs> and so I said, oh, thank you, you know, jumbo, jumbo. And thank you. And then went in the house and he got him some tea and his night coffee and everything like that. But then later on I was thinking, it's like way out in Africa, how are you going to go find a penny? or a nickel, or a dime. Who's going to deposit an American coin in a foreign African middle of the place coin like that, you know? And then he gives it to me, you know? It's like, wow, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, you kind of remember those things, be thankful for things people are led to do, help you out and everything like that, you know? And then you kind of realize, hey, sometimes, hey, shouldn't stress out so much in <laughs> some of the things we going through in daily walks and things like that, you know. And it's like, wow, praise God. He loves us. He's working with us, empowers us, has made a way for us to get closer to him, to the presence building up ourselves in our holy goals, in brande le copo shele ganda di be sopra la, l'engrende marcha la coroma la sele, listening, listening in our hearts to empower, strengthen, encourage us, you know, and we're just thankful. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for blessing your people. In the coming days, Father, you'll quicken to their heart, to their spirit, key things that you want them to walk in, the love that they're to walk in, the things that they're to do with their hands and their feet, Father. Whoosh, the wind of your Spirit blowing upon your people, Lord, here and online. Oh, Lord, yeah, great expectancy, for you are so great, Almighty God. Wow, we do not limit you in these coming days, Lord. Oh, you're able to touch us. Thank you, Lord. The glory shall not lift from us, but we will stay and abide in you, Lord. Who the glory of the Most High. Who the Shekinah glory. <laughs> Resting upon each and every one of us. Who even in the night watches. He 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 la baratoso. Lingada mashakla. Hela mashata. Angels working on your behalf. Isalomokara. We thank you. And if there's anyone online who says, Yeah, we want the Holy Ghost. We want Jesus in our household and life. You can say this prayer and say, Heavenly Father. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus died for my sins, was crucified and rose from the dead, and now seated at your right hand, interceding on my behalf. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. 
In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can contact the ministry, <laughs> wordoftruthmaui.org. And as you choose to give and plant a seed, you can hit that green button. And we believe with you for your increase, a thousandfold increase in the seeds that you sow to the 22 ministry outreaches and that special outreach to Lahaina and what they are going through, Father God. And we just thank you. God bless you. In Jesus' name.